Hi friends, today we will be discussing Noontide Toll. Noontide Toll is an excellent collection of short stories by Ramesh Gunsekera, the Sri Lankan born British author. Noontide Toll was published in the year 2013. It's a collection of interlinked stories, some regarded as a novel, as the book has a novelistic element with all the stories connected with one another. So the book can be read as a collection of stories or as a novel because the stories are told by a single narrator. The book draws an extraordinary portrait of post war Sri Lanka that grapples with the ghosts of its, of its troubled past. We know that Sri Lanka is a country which is still reeling from war and a devastating tsunami. Sri Lanka suffered the longest civil war in Southeast Asia that continued from 1983 to 2009. The war was fought between the government of Sri Lanka and the liberation tigers of Tamil Elam or LTTE. The death toll was around 30,000. The battle was fought to create an independent Tamil state because the Shingalese dominated government discriminated against uh, the Tamil in Sri Lanka. The root causes of the civil war between the Shingalese and Tamils were ethnic as well as religious. Buddhism versus the islands, three minority religions, Hinduism, Christianity, and Islam. The stories in this book are all set in the backdrop of post-war Sri Lanka after 2009. All the stories are told by Basanta. Who is Basanta? Basanta is a man of 55 who works as a driver for hire in Sri Lanka. Basanta takes early retirement from the coconut plantation and cashes in his pension to set up a minibus transport business. He takes his passengers wherever they want to go, be it for business or something more personal. The stories are divided into two sections. The first section is entitled North and the corresponding second section is entitled South. The North section is introduced as a, with a prologue uh, full tank, while running on an empty tank functions as an epilogue to the south section. Gunsekera has crafted his narrative so that his northern tales, folly, mess, deadhouse, scrap, roadkill, and renewals have to be read against the grain of his southern tales, ramparts, fluke, shoot, turtle, genus, and humbug. Vasanta tells of his journey with varying people going up from the ravaged north to the renewed south, places where there has been serious battle. As a typical driver, Vasanta observes without comment as his passengers discuss life, politics, and the details of their lives. Vasanta thus goes unnoticed by all. His professional camouflage offers him a kind of unobtrusiveness and near invisibility. Vasanta Das, uh, Vasanta also regards himself as invisible, a ghostly figure for whom hope has completely dried out, a man whose moment passed long ago. Vasanta is always moving, but every road seems to lead to a hospital. As he says in the prologue, full tank. Despite all the miles he has driven through, he feels he is spinning in sand. Vasanta transports his client to various sites, going to places he has never been before because he could not go there during the war. He drives around the country taking tourists, taking officials, business people, and families. As he drives to Sri Lanka carrying workers, families, meeting lonely soldiers, eager hoteliers, Vasanta reveals to us their uncertain lives after the end of a decades-long war. Vasanta tries to make sense of the new Sri Lanka. On his journey from the army camps of the north to the moonlit beaches of the south coast, he begins to wonder if the past can be left behind, whether to forget or remember the war. He wonders what the future might hold for a lovelorn soldier out on the ramparts, a fast-moving hotelier in a bombed-out town, an eager Jaffna student or a desperate librarian of empty shelves. The driver's job is, he says, 
to stay, stay in control behind the wheel, and that is all. The past is what you leave as you go. There is nothing more to eat. Mr. Van Man, however, gradually learns to realize that riding in his second-hand Toyota and witnessing his country's turmoil are mutually complementary. The minibus is indeed a microcosm of the island's faltering peace process. Vasanta's thoughts are the soul of the book. Through him, Gunsekara examines the central argument that continues to rage across the, the island. How should Sri Lanka address its past? Do we dig it up or do we bury it? So, Nuntai told is less about Basanta's journey than about those he transports. Through his eyes, we see snapshots of war zones, what portraits of those who visit them and outlines of what they may be seeking. The beautifully crafted road stories thus expose the simmering tensions in post-war Sri Lanka. With an indispensable dry humor, the stories mirror the immediate aftermath of tsunami and civil war. They provide a glimpse into the physical scars on the landscape and people as well. The stories resonate the immediate moment and the time after the moment is past. Should the past be forgotten or erased so that it heals the harms or whether you have to confront and learn from it? This dilemma is the bottom line of the stories contained in the book. Vasanta and his passengers seem to be stuck in the crossroad of the past and the present, the war and recovery. The stories reiterate the importance of the past, how the past begins to change in our mind, how the past sometimes be, sometimes naturally evaporates and sometimes is made to evaporate. The residues of the past, displacement, the crisis of identity, immigration still haunt the assumed peaceful life of the present. The war may be over, but Gun Sekera reminds us its aftermath lingers despite all the building and investment that pours in. The scars still remain. He says, <clears throat> When we first heard the war, war was over, we believed a line could be drawn between the mistake of the past and the promise of the future. One was the place you had been, the other was the place you were going to. We believed there was no, no need for the two to be connected. But as a driver, I should have known better. To go from one to the other, you need a road. And a road is nothing if it doesn't connect. So, it never happens that one fine morning you jump into a bright future and you forget all about your past. The horror of the past will continue to disturb your peace of mind at least for a certain period of time. There is always a passageway between your gloomy past and the hopeful future that you must traverse. As a driver, Vasanta realizes this unmistakably. To go from one road to the other, the car must run through streets and lanes. Vasanta's learning thus alerts us to the country's fatal attraction to collective amnesia. Vasanta considers his role as the only insomniac in the land of note. Just like the driver who stays awake all the night while we sleep all the way. He remarks, They say this island of ours is the crossroads of the world. But the more I see of it in, in this business and the more I meet, the more I understand the real truth of the matter. We live at one of those crazy junctions where everyone gets stranded not knowing which way to look, never mind go. All nodding like sleepy heads, unable to ever completely wake up. Gunsekera's Nuntai Toll thus explores the issues of reconstruction of the nation and redefining the national identity in the aftermath of war. The title of the story, Genus, symbolizes this issue. 
Janus is the two-faced god of Roman mythology. The title thus captures the island's fractured identities and problematic reconstruction. Post-traumatic stress disorder following a war comprises complex symptoms such as traumatic flashbacks, fear, avoidance, numbing, amnesia, and self-withdrawal. These symptoms are very common among the characters that we encounter in the stories. In the story, ironically entitled Renewals, Vasanta takes an important visitor to Jaffna Public Library. While waiting, he finds that he is also curious to explore the building and enters it for the first time. The burning of the Jaffna Public Library took place in the year 1981, when an organized Shingolis mob went on a rampage, burning the library. It was one of the most violent examples of ethnic biblioclasm of the 20th century. At the time of its destruction, the library was one of the biggest in Asia. Vasanta sees that the symbols of the war are erased out as though it had never happened or were forgotten. But some people in the story still remember them. The act of blotting out such atrocities is often associated with a sense of guilt which is emphasized in the story. The young Tamil encountered at the Jaffna library is an avid reader of Dante's Inferno, which he considers as his passport to a more promising life in Italy, but also a grim reminder of his country's self-destruction. More than any other stories, Scrap sheds light on the need to challenge the national script of the war. In the story, Sipala, a low-ranking government official, conducts Chinese delegates to the Mulai Tivu battleground. However, the tour is brought to an abrupt end as the guy registers his disapproval of one such battlefield being turned into a film set. The young director has no qualms about using a wreck warship into a promotional video. Don't you know what happened here? Sipala asks. The young director replies, happened. Are you talking history? We are the future, Machang. The fucking a future, no? The closing of uh, scene, the closing scene of Scrap echoes the story entitled In Shoot. Sanji, a Milan-based Tamil tiger refugee, takes camera equipments out of Basanta's van. His assignment is a lingari photo shoot of tanned women running with bat and pads on a cricket pitch. However, as in the earlier Northern story, nothing goes according to the plan. In Roadkill, a story set in 2011, two years after the army has finally crushed the decades-long Tamil tiger insurgency, Vasanta drives a wealthy Sri Lankan couple into formerly rebel-held territory where the husband wants to show his pregnant wife a property he hopes to turn into their home. They break their journey at a recently built hotel that represents, as Vasanta spells out to us, the new era. But the past pulls like a counterweight. Conversing with the assistant manager, Vasanta comes to suspect that she is a former tiger cadder. Her trigger finger calloused and discolored. In the south section, Fluke and Humbug stand out with their exploration of the country's obsession with liquid modernity and reflect the island's pursuit of US dollar. The narrator seems to share the exuberance of the new generation, oblivious to the OR, with everything geared towards the tourism bonasa. As a professional driver, Basanta appears to represent the country's changes, particularly the first-class new road to Hambantota, or the new highway connecting Jaffna and Colombo, which implies more business and fewer traffic hazards. Symbolically, the new artery is in stark, stark contrast with the northern dirty potholed roads, which almost lead to a hospital or a government-sanctioned 
war memorial. Far from bringing uh, Tamil North and Shingali South closer, the new highway merely represents the pseudo reconstruction. The story Humbug represents an inn that Leonard Woolf, that is husband of uh, Virginia Woolf, visited in 1908. That inn is now scheduled for renovation. Miss Susila, the Sri Lankan expatriate, thinks that Leonard Woolf's heritage should be preserved and not to be tampered with or marketed for the sake of modernity. However, the receptionist considers the past as a hindrance, which can be dismantled and reconstructed. In Genus, a couple from Czechoslovakia evokes the communist, communist regime as the land of equivocation in the face of censorship. Vasatta draws parallels between censorship operating behind the post of Sri Lanka and the need for escapism. The couple views Sri Lanka as a land of amnesia, mesmerized by the death of the sun god and oblivious of the plight of the tsunami survivors. Vasanta's journey is thus a metaphorical exploration, exploration of what it is like to live in a place where there has been tremendously traumatic period that went on and on for 30 years. Vasanta is trying to understand how one lives in this sort of situation, how one deals with the past which is traumatically difficult. As a driver, Vasanta can recognize the danger of ignoring the past, what is lying behind your back. Vasanta begins to understand that as a driver, you need to check your rear view mirror, otherwise you do not know what is creeping up behind you. Whereas there are a lot of people who hope that the past go away and not to look back. Vasanta's view is to understand what is the right thing to do. One should not look back, but as a driver he knows that it is a dangerous thing to do. Or should he always look back? That is also dangerous. So you should also look ahead as well. It is dangerous thing to forget the past, but at the same time, it is also dangerous to obscure the future. Nuntai told the title of the uh, collection can be read uh, in several ways. If morning is the beginning of the day and night the end, then noon is the zenith, the highest point in the life of an individual or of a country. But if the tide comes in at noon, it is at a critical juncture. In Julius Caesar, as Brutus and Caesar, as Cassius, discuss the final phase of the civil war. There is a tide in the affairs of men, which taken at the, at the flood leads on to future. Omitted all the voyage of their life is bound in shallows and in miseries. Instead of executing judicial transparency and the prosecution of war crimes, the government of Sri Lanka has chosen the easier fast track to global capitalism, thereby sending minorities to oblivion, for which a heavy price must be paid, as the alliterative word toll suggests in the title. Nuntai toll thus speaks from Sri Lanka's ragged shores tales of loss, uncertainty, guilt, and moral choice, and strings them together like pearls that is formed of a hope that has been held under water for too long. With great subtlety, Gunsekera sketches the line between the mistakes of the past and the promise of the future. Our life is structured and dominated by stories, stories of the past, what our times are, all are intermingled. We cannot escape one and separate the other. Gunsekera's book attempts to maintain this balance, how to balance things, balance the past and the future.